Hello Norfolk Naval Shipyard. We're here today to visit the Cold Spray team. This cutting edge technology is transforming the way we repair and maintain our Navy ships. Let's go inside and talk to the team and learn about this innovation and what they're doing to support the fleet. Hey Sterling, How Captain you Mossman, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, glad to be here. So tell me a little about yourself to start off and then we're going to talk about this uh, device here. So uh, I've been actually doing thermal spray coatings for some time prior to coming to the yard and then I came to the yard for cold spray when I started getting innovative with that. Um, I guess I bring a little bit of knowing how to apply coatings to shafts and different scenario parts, you know, for repairs. So tell me a little bit about what is cold spray, the basics of it. So cold spray is basically, it's, um, it's kind of like a it's a type of welding, but not necessarily. It comes out the nozzle of Mach 3. It's very similar to thermal spray. Uh, how I would put it is thermal spray is like a wetsuit. Cold spray is kind of like a tattoo kind of deal. It's for quicker, faster, um, you know, repairs on parts that are worn or need being repaired. So you're talking a very small piece of metal, a very high rate of speed, basically impinging upon the base metal, right? Yes. And, then, and the idea is there that it bonds and sticks, right? And that's so it doesn't build up a lot of heat like a thermal spray was or a welding would. It's just impinging upon it and they bond as yeah. the metal. Cold spray don't really introduce that much uh, heat to it, so you don't actually bend or destroy uh, the, sort, uh, the shafts or parts, whatever. So if you build it up, you'll prep it down, you'll build it back up every size, then we'll come in, we'll machine it to where it's actually back to spec. So it's a brand new part. So what kind of repairs could we do with cold spray or what is it ideal for? So we actually just did a job out in California on the USS Boxer. It was the starboard rotor. Uh, the bearing had, I guess, got messed up, and we came in on emergent work. Instead of having to dry dock everything and you know take the shaft out, we actually did it in place and repaired it, and actually was a success. Fantastic! That's great. That's that's wonderful to hear. And it was our equipment out there too. Yes, sir. It's actually this robot right here. That's great. Right now we have a lab setting here, essentially We're inside an enclosure with it, you took it out, applied it on the ship. Is that really where the, the, like the ultimate goal of, of cold spray is to be able to do it application on the ship at the site? So it's kind of, I guess, yes and no. It's nice to be able to have your section to be able to do it in place well, as, as far as traveling wise, but also be able to bring shafts to us here as far as supporting, you know, I guess the welders when they weld stuff up. But uh, it's, it can really, sky's the limit with it. We're still kind of just touching of what it's capable of. But um, we're, we're growing more and more as far as the different things we're able to do with it. So what else have we done with it? We recently Boxer, which is a great success on the rudder, but what else have we done? We did the rickover, the dive shaft in place in Groton. Um, that was the first time ever we actually sprayed cold spray on a uh, you know, submarine. Um, seven days and we were in and out. So uh, that's the only two travel jobs we did with it. Um, we've done some other shafts. I believe Griswold was a part of a, the one of the first pieces that went back onto the sub itself. Um, done quite a few different things, to be honest with you. The flapper we did, uh, that was kind of a, a little run at it. That was one of the first ones to where you had the, the, the dovetail, I uh, guess, groove. It was kind of hard because you had to match up your, your uh, geometries properly so we wouldn't build up on the side of the face or anything awkwardly, I guess you could say. Okay, so tell me a little bit about like the prep. To, to do what you have to do. My understanding is it takes a little bit of prep, maybe more than a little bit of prep, to get it ready and then go to actually do the... So the if, they, if there's some dings or something in the shaft, what they'll do is they'll come in, they'll locate the areas of failure, we will actually come in, they'll prep them, prep it down, depending on how far it goes, there's normally our max we can actually go with it, but they'll basically cut out all the flaws and everything, we'll come back in and we'll build it back up, we'll, Prior to doing that, we'll, sand, we'll clean it up with alcohol or anything, make sure there's no grease or anything on there. Um, then we'll, we'll sandpaper it, give it an like anchor tube profile, I guess you could say. It kind of scuffs it up so it's not so shiny. Then we'll come and we'll spray it. Then they'll make, basically take it back down and grind and finish it. So. And it's done with a robot because it needs to be very precise. Is that correct? The machine is done either in a machine, a lathe, or you know, a mill. Um, but yes, we do the spraying with robots, either this cobot here or a fanx that we have in the other booths. Cat well, Mossman, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Emma. Nice to meet you. Hi, Emma. So how long have you been on the team and uh, what, what's your role on with the cold spray? Um, I've been involved with cold spray since about 2021 time frame. I actually spent a majority of my apprenticeship down here. 
Um, a lot of what I do is programming the Fanuc robots, which are the two. There's one right there and there's one on the other side. Um, and I also do a lot of the record keeping for the sprays. So I have like a whole Excel spreadsheet set up um, where we track pretty much every single variable that you could possibly think of for jobs that we do. You said you all this records keeping. So what what kind of records keeping do you have to keep for cold spray? So with cold spray, um, a lot of what you have to make sure that you're keeping consistent with is like the temperature, the speed that you're running the robot at, the the air pressure that you're shooting the powder out at. Um, another thing that we noticed a couple of years ago, it was me and Griswold had noticed that like the outside element or outside environment. Um, it actually does kind of affect the spray a little bit, so like the temperature, the humidity that day, so sometimes if it's a really finicky powder that we're spraying, we will put that down on the spreadsheets too. So you're taking these records as you're spraying, you're keeping track of all this, okay. So a nice hot, humid day like today is... Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll get a completely, adhesion, or a completely different adhesion rate than you will in like a really cold day in January. When you say adhesion rate, how do you tell how well it's adhering? Um, so usually we do about five passes over the, it's usually with the, the tensile bars is where we run into this big issue. You'll do about five passes, um, you'll measure your substrate before and after the spray and then you just divide it by how many passes you did and that gives you a pretty good estimate of how much you're throwing down per pass. Okay. So. And uh, you put down more than you need, right, then you go back and machine it smooth, right, back to where it needs to be? Yeah, so anywhere from 15 to 20 thou oversize is usually what you want to shoot for. Okay. And you do all that here, or does it go back to the machine shop? I, we do it here. We have a small machine shop over on the other side. Okay. Um, where we, as soon as we're done with the pieces, we take them over there, he machines it down to whatever the size is, and then oh, it's great. usually good to go by that point. Great. So what do you, uh, what do you see the future of, of cold spray being, and, <clears throat> and what are you going to do as part of that team? I think cold spray is really, really useful on shipboard jobs specifically. I know, I think Sterling had mentioned the job up in Groton on the Rickover and then the one that we just did in San Diego on the Boxer. Um, I think in situations like those to avoid having to dry dock boats or getting boats back out on deployment on time as opposed to having to order new parts and potentially wait, you know, six months to a year or sometimes even longer, I think cold spray is really useful in application because it's more of an emergency repair. Right. type situation um, but at the same time we do a lot of actuators for subsafe valves so some of those prints are obsolete some of the companies that have made these actuators don't exist anymore sometimes we don't have a CCRP component that we can pull so it's really really useful in that sense too because we can fix parts that we no longer have access to so you're literally taking something very old and making it like new right yeah well, that's great well really appreciate what you do on the team and thank you so much for explaining uh, about the robot and and what you actually do during this break. Hey, Captain Mossman, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Devin Downey. Devin, you are great. So how long have you been on the team here? Uh, about a year and a half now. And how long have you been in the shipyard? A uh, year and a half now. <laughs> fantastic. That's fantastic. That's great. Uh, so what is your role on the team? Um, support, basically learning everything right now. To, okay. uh, take over I guess. Had you ever heard of cold spray before? I've, you? I've heard of it. I've just, I came from a therm thermal spray shop so I'm just used to thermal spray so when it came here it was a lot of new things to me. Okay and what have you been able to do and did you go out to Boxer? And uh, I, uh, I did do the Boxer that was my only travel job I've done with them but I did do a lot of traveling with my last company thermal spray. Uh, I did the Tripoli, the, I was on the Wasp, uh, the America, a couple of ships. So you've done other additive you know, way, ways to add material yes. to you, so thermal and such, right? Yes. So what do you like about the cold spray compared to the other? It's not as messy. Okay. It's a lot cleaner, a lot cleaner. I mean, it's our start, a lot more hoops and hurdles we gotta jump over to stay safe. It's not like thermal spraying, it's, I don't know, it's just pow the powder, a lot more powder's getting put out with thermal, Okay. in my opinion. And it's a lot hotter too, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot hotter, a lot hotter. Okay, so what uh, what are you excited about with uh, cold spray? Really, just to see it ascend, because like like Emma was saying, it's you can use it for so many things, shipboard, around the shops, like a lot of things. Like it, there's so many so many places you can use it for. So you think the potential is great, and we're just getting started? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it keeps going the way it is, because I, I would like to see it grow. It is a it is a great field. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Well, that's a lot of good information. So. Appreciate it. Ricky, I really appreciate your time today with you and your crew. Uh, it's pretty exciting technology that you're uh, all dealing with and 
bring into the shipyard. Uh, what, what, are, what are you looking forward to with cold spray? Well, um, basically for the Navy right now, we're the number one shipyard that's doing these spraying. We have been for quite a few years right now. And we've been called away on two major jobs that we've done, one up in Groton on the Rickover and then the Boxer over in San Diego to do repairs, saving the Navy millions of dollars and getting the ship underway sooner that's, than that's, later. That's great. And really, it's the first two of many to come, right? Yes. Well, again, I really appreciate your time today. Appreciate sharing with us, sharing with the rest of the shipyard what this technology is. Uh, what it can do, and where we're headed with it. So keep up the great work and look forward to many more great things out there with cold spray. Thank you, sir. Thank you.